is for uh, the United Postal Service. So uh, he asked me to lead some songs tonight. We're going to do a couple of Christmas songs tonight. If y'all would stand, join us. We're going to begin with It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. It came upon the midnight clear That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch their harps of gold Peace on the earth, goodwill to men From heaven's all-gracious King The world in solemn stillness lay sing yet with the woes of sin and strife the world has suffered long beneath the angel strain have rolled two thousand years of wrong and man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring oh hush the noise you men of strife and hear the angels sing for lo the days are hastening on by prophets barge foretold when with the ever circling years comes round the age of gold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling and the whole world give back the song which now the angels sing and then go tell it on the mountain <coughs> yeah I don't want to think about it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'd have to do it how she did. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and Christ is born while shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy light tell it on the mountain over the hills Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain over the hill. Christ is born down in a lowly manger the humble Christ was born and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas born go tell it on the mountain over
gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you tonight. And Father, we just uh, just count it a privilege to be your children. We stand in awe of you today, Lord, and what you mean to us and, and how uh, special it is to know that you cared so much about us that you sent your Son uh, into this horrible world to save our souls. And so, Father, I just pray tonight that as we do whatever we do tonight, uh, through the business meeting, through all of the things that happen tonight, Lord, that everything we do glorifies and honor you and you and you alone because you're the only one that is due any honor and glory in jesus name amen amen let me just share real quickly before we get started we're not going to have a family meeting tonight because well we forgot that when we redid our bylaws uh it stated in there that we're technically supposed to announce we're supposed to hand out the budget at least a week before we vote on it and so we want to stick to that so uh we have got the budget ma'am it's now been handed out so you can look over the budget and let me just say this if you have a question about the budget or a problem with anything in the budget get with me or missy or get with whoever whatever issue you have with it get with whoever the team leader is that handles that part of the that 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 budget has to do with so they can explain to you about the budget okay so that i don't think anybody will have any questions but if you do just let us know the budget has gone up quite a bit because we had a staff we added a staff member and we got a new building coming up, so we adjusted for that. So uh, it, it is quite a bit more than what it was last year. So if you have any questions, just get with us. We can answer that question. And then we'll vote on it because we're not having church next Wednesday night. We'll vote on it that next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock at the night service, okay? All right? So we won't have a family meeting tonight. You, got, you don't have to go through a family meeting. Aren't you glad? Amen? All right. Robin said she is. All right, well, y'all open your Bibles. There's something else I was going to say. And I, Stephanie, am I forgetting anything? Tell me. Oh, I thought you said yes. Oh, <laughs> you're forgetting too. <laughs> okay, all right, open your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. And we're going to be looking at that, verses 1 through 17. We're going to look at Isaiah 2. But as you get there to Matthew, chapter 1, um, some of you might be looking at it and saying, Brother Kevin, this is the genealogy of Jesus. Half these names we can't even pronounce. So why in the world are you wanting to look at the genealogy of Jesus on, the fi- on five nights before Christmas Day? You may be like my three-year-old grandson the- last week that said, said, Are you kidding me? You might be thinking that. Uh, we I got to tell off on a little Warren. He's a little cowboy, and he loves being with me with those cows. Well, Friday we had gone to to Malakoff to we bought a hay rake, and we had to have it converted to where we can run the baler behind it. And so we took it to Malakoff, and the lady said, he, "She said there's 50 rakes on this yard." And I thought, man, he would love to see that. So, asked Brittany, we took him with us to to the place in Malakoff. We were coming back, and I thought, man, today's Friday. It's the it's the cow sale in Athens and he's never seen a cow sale and he loves cows and so I we were we were coming around the loop and I said Warren you want to go see the cow sale he's yeah so we pulled into the cow barn and of course I don't know if you've ever been to a cow sale before but when you pull in there on sale day there's trailers everywhere trucks with trailers everywhere well I had pulled a rake to Malakoff so I didn't have a trailer and I wasn't planning on buying any cows so I didn't have a trailer on the truck and so we're pulling in the yard, and all I heard in the back seat was, are you kidding me? We don't have a cow trailer. <laughs> he was like, we're here at the sale. We don't even have a trailer. So you might be thinking tonight, are you kidding me? We're looking at Matthew's gospel and the, and the genealogy of Jesus. But guys, hear me tonight. It's so important that we have the genealogy of Jesus. Amen? It's important that we have it. One reason is to confirm the prophecies of who the Messiah would come from. That's one of the reasons. The main thing we're going to look at here in a minute. But guys, Jesus, they had prophesied about the Messiah coming for hundreds of years. And in Isaiah chapter 11, 
and verses 1 through 10. If you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah chapter 11. I want to read that first, and then we'll get into our text tonight. But in Isaiah chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, it says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him in the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness, the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. Listen to this. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together. A a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Listen to this one. The young shall lie down with the lion, and the lion shall eat straw with the ox. And this one here, the nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra. And the weaned child shall put, put his hand on the otter's den. They shall not hurt any hurt. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And listen to verse 10. In that day the root of Jesse who shall stand as a signal for the people. Of him shall the nations inquire. And his resting place shall be glorious. You see right here. We read about Jesus, the Messiah, coming from the root, the stump of Jesse, which is David. And we're going to read tonight in Matthew, in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, that indeed he did come from the line of David and truly was the Messiah. So that's one reason why we need to have the genealogy of Jesus Christ. But then there's another real important thing to see about the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and that's going to be our subject for tonight. But before we get to that, I want to ask you all a question. Because this is what I want to really look at tonight. How many of you have struggled in your life, or may even be, there may be some people struggling here tonight with this thought. God can't use me because of the person I once was. How many people have ever struggled with that? God can't use me because of the person that I once was. How many of us struggled for the years, or maybe even... Or struggling right now, as I, as I said, with that thought, God won't use me because I've done so many things that, that have brought down the name of Jesus. So I can't picture him using me. I can't tell you guys how many years I struggled. And it wasn't, you know, many, it was a couple of years after I got right with the Lord that I really struggled with that fact. Because when I fell in love with Jesus... And really begin to get into his word and understand what it says about how I, need to, how I need to live for him. And then I begin to think about all the years that I lived the way I lived. And all the sins that I committed. I struggle with that thought of how can God forgive me, let alone use me. Amen? How can God forgive me, let alone use me? And so I want to say this night. If you struggle with that or you're thinking that tonight, listen. We're going to begin to study God's Word tonight. And when you look at this holy book, you will quickly learn that God used a whole bunch of old unholy people. Amen? As you study, Kenneth, you want them? Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought about that. Kenneth saying, well, back before you got right with the Lord, before you were saved, you didn't realize so much you were sinning. But now you're saved, and so you struggle with when you have that day when you you fall short. Yeah, why would you use me when I'm such a, like Mike says, a smuck? I know. Guys, we're going to, as you look at this Bible and this wonderful word of God, we see that God used the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen? He just, he just, that's what God does. 
And now, I want to say this. With that said, we need to understand that everybody's a sinner. Amen? All sin and fall short of the glory of God. The only one that hasn't fallen short, the only one that was out with without sin, was Jesus himself. But we're going to see tonight is that God even uses the worst of sinners. And we're going to read that many of them, even though they were some of the, it appeared that a few of them are the worst of sinners. God still used them in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And so what I pray, I pray we can see tonight as we look at all of these people that God used to be in the line of Jesus or to, for Jesus to be in the line of them. I pray that we'll see that God used some of the worst of people to be a part of the Messiah's bloodline. And so as we're five days away from the day that we celebrate Jesus' birth, let's look at the line that Jesus came from and let it help all of us to see that he can use us as well. Amen? No matter what we've done, no matter where we've been. And so let's look at Matthew. I'm going to read it all. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. And I'm just going to tell you, when I get to a hard name, I'm just going to say hard name and keep going. Amen? All right? I'll read it. I can read it. Ron Robin said, you want me to just read it for you? <laughs> she would do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> it says a book in the, of the genealogy of Jesus Christ the son of David the son of Abraham Abraham was the father of Isaac and Isaac the father of Jacob and Jacob the father of Judah and his brother and Judah the father of Perez and Zerah the, uh, by Tamar and Perez the father of Hezron and Hezron the father of Ram and Ram the father of Amminadab and Amminadab the father of Nashon and Nashon the father of Selman and Selman the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed, by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon, by the, by the wife of Uriah. And Solomon the father of Re, Rehoboam, the, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asaph, and Asaph the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah. And Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh. You getting tired yet? And Manasseh uh, the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of, how you say that one, Robin? Jeconiah, Jeconiah, and his brother at the time, and his brothers at the time of deportation of Babylon. And after the deportation of Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of. Uh, hard word and hard word, father of Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel, the father of Abihu. And Abihu, the father of El Elikim. And Elikim, the father of Azor. And Azor, the father of Zadok. And Zadok, the father of Achim. And Achim, the father of Elihu. El Elihud, and Elihu, the father of Eleazar. And Eleazar, the father of Mathan. And Mathan, the father of Jacob. And Jacob, the father of Joseph. And the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. So all the genealogies from Abraham to David were 14 generations and from David to the deportation of Babylon, 14 generations and the, from the deportation of Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. Wow. Praise the Lord got through that without too many mess ups. You know, when we read all these names without considering the kind of people some of these were, you may think, well, that's three minutes I can't get back in my life. You know, you may think that. But understand, it's so important to look at some of these people that God used. It's important that we can run through them. Some of them were great men. Some of them were mess-ups. And listen, I know I say this often, but I love how God uses everyone. Amen? I love it. And how he puts all these people's stories in the Bible. But as he did, he puts all their dirty laundry out there to see. Amen? He didn't cover anything up. He didn't say to the, when, the, when he was inspiring the writers to write this, don't put that in there. I wish they wouldn't have done that. Don't put that in there. He puts it all in there. And, it's, and so in that we can understand God wants to use everyone. He, want, he can use anyone. And so who do you see in this line of G, that Jesus came in this line that if you would have laid out the lineage of Jesus, these cats wouldn't have been in there. Amen. Who can you see in this line that you're like, I can't believe he, that person's in the line of Jesus. Anybody want to throw one out there? Rahab. Rahab. 
She's one. We're going to look at her in a minute. Who else? David. David. Who else you see in here? You're like, I can't believe that guy's in there. That lady's in there. Tamar. We're going to look at her too. Ahab. Well, no, he's, that's a different one. That's not him. Listen, guys, as we look at the line that Jesus came from, there are at least four men and three women who you would think, boy, they should not be in this holy line. Well, at least two women shouldn't be in this holy line. And so let's look at them. I want to look at who they are. The first one we see is Jacob. Jacob. Think about Jacob. And when you look at him, he would later be called who? Israel. Why would he be called Israel? That's right. Who, who came from Jacob? The 12 tribes, the nation of Israel, literally came from Jacob. But when you look at Jacob, he was a deceiver from a young age. He literally lied his way to the top. He did. I mean, from the time he was, when he came out of his mother, he was grabbing onto his twin brother Esau. And he always wanted to be, have his birthright. And so he literally, most people, most of you all know this, some of you may not be well versed in the Bible, but he literally tricked his daddy into giving him his blessing so that he had the birthright of Esau. And from then on, he had trouble with his brother. He had to flee. <laughs> it's, you need to go back and read that story because it's a mess. So Jacob was a deceiver. He's lied his way to the top. There's just one of them, but who's next? David. They look at David. So, well, Brother Kevin, that's a man after God's own heart. Yeah, he was. But what did he do? He was a murderer. We read the story of David and he, the, what does the Bible say? When kings go off to war, David stayed home. So David was disobedient, wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. He's out on his He's out on his rooftop when King David, mighty man after God's own heart, he's out walking on his rooftop. He sees a beautiful woman bathing, and he says, I want her. Finds out she's Uriah's wife. I don't care. So he sleeps with her. She becomes pregnant. I mean, you think that's bad enough, right? But David says, you know what? I'm going to try to hide this. So he gets Uriah to come in. He says, he says get, get, get. He said, let me get the, get the report from you. Tell me how Joab's doing, my commander-in-chief. He said, now go stay with your wife. And what happens? Next morning, Uriah's sitting at his front step. And he said, man, if my brothers are out fighting, I'm not going to go eat and drink and lay with my wife. And so David stuck because she was pregnant. And so he makes, gets a letter, sends it to Joab and says, put Uriah on the front lines. And when the fighting's at its most intense, pull back so that he dies. So he has her husband killed, takes her as his wife, so he covers up the pregnancy, and he's like, okay, I covered all that up. Until Nathan the prophet comes to him and confronts him. Now I want to tell you, there's a beautiful story of redemption for David in this. A lot of circumstances, a lot of consequences come with it. But those, there's no doubt what he did was something that was some, one of the worst of sinners would do. You think about what David did, you're like, I can't believe it. Yet David, he's the one mentioned in Isaiah as the one who Jesus would come from, from the line of David. And so we can see in Genesis chapters 25 through 50 about Jacob. We can read about David's horrible incident in 2 Samuel chapters 11 through 14. And all of it is in complete detail of what they did. The things that they did were that were against the Lord. But then who else would would not be likely person to be on here? Manasseh. Uh, Let me say his name again. I think I wrote it down wrong. Uh, um, Yeah, Manasseh. Manasseh. 
No, I'm not, I'm not to him yet. So excuse me. Who would be the next one? It'd be King Solomon. I jumped ahead of myself. King Solomon, what did he do? Huh? He got all the money? Solomon, he had a bunch of them, didn't he? Solomon, how did he start out, though? How did he start out? Hey, God came to him in a vision and said, what do you want? Wisdom. Yeah, and he said, I, I want to be, I want, I want wisdom. And God said, because you asked for wisdom and not for money and fortune and fame, I'm going to give it all to you. And so he, he, he had everything a person could ask for. And he still messed it up. By the end of his life, he had all these wives. Many of them had led him to worshiping false gods. A man that is known as the wisest man that ever lived. We read about him in 1 Kings chapter 1 through 11. Chapters 1 through 11. He has 11 chapters. But because of who he turned out to be, his descendants went downhill from there. One being Manasseh. That's where I'm getting to him. That we read about in 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 21, who also is in the line of Jesus, Jesus in the line of him that we read about in Matthew chapter 1. And you know what the Bible says about him? It says he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Matter of fact, it's, it's, it's understood that he was probably one of the most evil kings that ruled over Judah. Listen to that. One of the most evil rulers of Judah. And this man was so evil that during his reign and then his son Ammon's reign, they led Judah so far away from God that when Josiah, his grandson, came on the scene, they didn't even know about the books of the law. What we would know is the Bible today. They didn't even know about them. Now we don't know if it was it was Genesis through Deuteronomy that they didn't have, or just Deuteronomy. But Mas- the Manasseh was so evil. He led Israel, so, Judah, so far away from God that by the time Josiah was king, they didn't even know about God's laws. And Josiah had 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 felt convicted he wanted to serve God and so he began to repair the temple and while they were repairing the temple they found the books of the law and the Bible says he tore his robe he couldn't believe what was going on and so that man Manasseh who was so evil God allowed him to be part of the line that would ultimately bring us to our Savior Jesus Christ those four guys, and then there's also, also three women we see in this line. But here's another interesting thing. Women were not usually mentioned in man's genealogy. But these were. And one of them was Tamar. The story of Tamar is an interesting one, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into it that far. But Tamar was the daughter-in-law of Judah. And she was a Canaanite woman. She was a Gentile. What does that tell us? Jesus, was Jesus a pure Jew? No. Now we know God was his father. The Holy Spirit was his father. But Mary, when you look at the line, I mean, through Joseph, we know that, and of course, Joseph wasn't his earthly father. But when you look at all this, God made it clear that he came for even the Gentiles because he allowed these Gentile women to be part of the line of Jesus. And then we have Ruth from Moab. And then finally we look at another one that Laura mentioned, Rahab. What do we read about Rahab? What do we read about her? What do we read when we read about her? We read about her in Joshua chapter 2. But what do we read about her? In, 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 yeah, Jericho. Sir? What note did they play? What note was it? <laughs> That's good. Did y'all hear that? He said the note they played when it fell over was B flat. (laughs) That's good. I've never heard that. (laughs) That is a good one. 
So when she was, when they got to her and was, was, was in her residence and she was hiding them, who, who, what, what was she? She was a prostitute. She was a prostitute. So guys, do you see it? In just this short amount of time, we've learned that in the lineage of Jesus, we have a deceiver. We have an adulterer. We have a murderer. We have another adulterer. We have a worshiper of other gods. We have one who was seen as the most evil king that Judah had ever had. And three women who were Gentiles. And one of them was a prostitute. But as we've looked at the lineage of Jesus and all the people that God used to get to the place where the Messiah would be born, now back to that question. Do you ever have that thought or still have that thought that God won't use me because of all I've done? I want you to think about that tonight. Can we see tonight that no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, God still wants to use you. He can still use you. And maybe tonight in your heart, you know in your heart that God has God has just let this message be for you. And he's showing you right now that he still wants to use you if you just let him. I want you to think about that tonight. Because it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been, God wants to use you. And I'm so thankful that God showed me all those years ago that he could use me in spite of all the things I'd done. And y'all know, y'all know my story and I'm not going to share it, but I thought about this today, 23 years ago before I would even take this church. I told that tiny little body of about 12 people all my baggage before I would let them call me as the pastor of this church. And they still chose to call me, and God still chose to use me, praise the Lord, in spite of all of the things that I did before I got right with Christ. And I want us to realize tonight, God still wants to use all of us to work together for the kingdom. Amen? He wants to use everybody in this room, everybody in this church, to work together for the kingdom of of God, and I want to end with this. Don't let your past dictate what God wants to do with your future. Amen? Don't let your past dictate what God wants to do with your future because sometimes we get so caught up with our past, we can't let God, we, don't, we won't allow God to use us in our present and our future. Once we seek forgiveness, once we set our eyes back on him, he, he casts our sins as far as the east is from the west. Amen? So remember that tonight as we look at the lineage, the line, the genealogy of Jesus. God used some crazy characters to bring us the Messiah. Amen? And I know some of us are some crazy characters too. Amen? So he uses us today. Mike, hush. <laughs> All right, does anybody have any questions? All right, well let's let's look at our let's look at our prayer list. We might have a let's see what time it is. We might have a little bit extra time to pray tonight tonight. Who wants to pass these out for me? Mike's got one. Cody's got one. Let me have one of them. Stephanie has the mic, so if you have a prayer concern, let me just share this with you all. Please be praying for uh, Heidi and Miss Miss Vicky McGill. We had we had the funeral for their for Miss Vicky's grandson and uh, Heidi's son Cannon yesterday, and I know they are they are having a rough day today. So be praying for them and their family. Pray for uh, Rhonda and her family. We're going to have uh, the services for Miss Billy. Friday morning in Buffalo, and so be praying for them because uh, it's Christmas time. You know they're going to be it's going to be a bad time for them. So be praying for them. Anyone we need to pray for specifically tonight, Dennis?
70, then it's right there. I don't know who they are, but there was an accident on on 287 on Star Hill going to Elkhart. And I've, okay. And I've heard that two people passed away. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, one. But, but we yeah. need to pray for yeah. those families. I know, it was a, I know a lady was killed, but I don't know. Lively. Chelsea Lively. So we need to pray for the Rogers family and the Lively family, no doubt about it. Somebody from uh, Natchez, <coughs> Natchez was behind that, behind the wreck. how it happened. Oh, really? Golly. We need to pray for those families, no doubt about it, pray for those families. Dusty? Uh, I've got a couple. Uh, Jerusha's sister went to have a colonoscopy colonoscopy on Monday mm -hmm. and they uh they're gonna do surgery tomorrow she's got a tumor they said it's cancerous so they'll they'll find out more whenever they get in there and, okay and, and look at it so be praying for them and the, the doctors when they perform that surgery tomorrow and then uh Glenn his wife's on the prayer list you know she's she's not doing good I mean it's really yeah it's looking pretty bleak okay the, the man you work with right no commander oh Glenn's wife really okay I'd heard, I texted him about a week ago and asked him how she was doing, and he said this day to day, so, okay, we need to keep praying for Glenn's wife, okay. Did you say what Jerusha's sister's name was? Did I miss that? Sir? Mandy. Mandy? Okay. Okay, okay. Mandy East, is it, well, what's her last name? Hines, Okay. Mandy Hines, keep praying for her. Anyone else we need to pray for tonight? Mary Jane? Uh, Sherry Kennedy called me, her grandson. Sherry Kennedy's grandson, Zach, he uh -huh. has RSV, and her daughter, Lisa, has the flu. Okay. And I think a lot of people have a the flu. A lot of people have got the flu right now, yeah. They do. Okay. Is she Is she off work, or is she able to go back to work? Okay, okay, okay. So she's still sick, but she's doing better. Keep praying for her, okay? Okay. Hamilton family? Okay. And who passed away? His wife? Okay. Okay, wow. Okay, let's pray for the Hamilton family. Okay. Okay, Junior's father, Junior's friend's daddy had a really bad accident. We want to pray for his stepdad. Do you know what? What's your friend's name? Derek. So let's pray for Derek and his, Derek and his family. Okay, and his dad. Thank you, sir. Okay, Ken. Really? Golly. Okay. So, wow. So Ken broke his back when he prayed for him. And then what's her name? Lost her name. A lady that's been sick since COVID. She's Sandy. Pray for Sandy. She's had a lot of sickness since COVID. 
So pray for her too. Okay. Really, and her husband's lost. Okay. Okay. I have a Laura. praise report. Amen. Alicia Crutcher, who we've been praying for, uh -huh. she has no cancer. Praise Jesus. That's so, awesome. That's awesome. Are, praise the Lord. They are. We still need prayer. She is in a lot of pain. Um, we are praying. They're keeping an eye because they was not able to remove the whole tumor. So they're still keeping an eye on what is left in there. We are praying for no growth. Okay. If there is no growth, no radiation. Amen. So that is our prayer right now, but it is not cancer. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. That's great. That's good to hear. I talked to Brother Bill today. Miss Rhonda uh, does have, she went today to have her test done. They, she does have blockage, and they couldn't do anything today. And they're going to watch it and maybe have her come back later. But she's spending the night in the hospital tonight and should go home tomorrow. So keep praying for her. Any, Chrissy? Yes, we need to put Matt's mother on the prayer list. Has she heard any more news? Okay. Okay, she, her cancer's back, but they're not sure how where yeah so be praying for Kim Matt's mama okay anyone else any unspoken always many any other any other prayer requests um keep praying for Brenda she came by yesterday and uh she's pretty weak but she brought some food by for the funeral so keep praying for her and um, she's supposed to have her other stint put in the 28th. Okay. Okay. I think she's getting two in, I think. Yeah. Okay, y'all remember, we're not having Sunday school Sunday morning. We're just having worship, okay? And then we'll have the Lord's Supper Sunday night at 6. Laura? I would say don't get donuts. Yeah, I would say don't get donuts because we're not having Sunday school. Yeah. Yeah, I would say don't get any donuts because we want people won't have to be here till like 10, 10, 15 or so. So uh, if you want donuts, you'll have plenty of time to go get you some before church, okay? So, <laughs> but we'll have the Lord, so we'll have candlelight service Sunday night and it, it's always a sweet time, so. I look forward to all of that. Any any other prayer requests? All right, we've got we've got about five or six minutes, so I'm gonna ask a few people to pray tonight. Where's that mic at? Cody? Will you come sit right here? I'm gonna ask Cody to pray and then you can hand Josh the mic. Okay. Okay. And then I'll close when Josh finishes. I'll spend a little time in prayer. Father God, I just am so thankful that each and every one of us get to be in your house tonight. And Lord, I, you heard all the prayers needed and people of healing and just being there for their families. Just I ask you to just lift them up, Lord. And if, you're, if it's at your will, you'll heal the the people that need to be healed, Lord. And I just uh, another thing, Lord. I for the for this Christmas, Lord. I just. I want to pray for each and every person and family, <clears throat> including myself, mostly just it gets so busy, Lord, and I I feel like sometimes I get so fast and just uh, I don't stop to think and uh, just look up to you, Lord, when I get stressed or just pushed around and just pulled it every other way and just thinking about Christmas and we all just need to sit back and just be still and realize the true meaning of Jesus and his birthday, Lord. I uh I pray just for this church and the building process, Lord. I I know you're working through this and this process is starting to get smoother. We're seeing progress. That's always good and uh 
Lord, I just pray for the men that are building this this add-on. I just pray you keep them safe each and every day and uh, just give them the, the guidance and knowledge each and every day to work safe and keep their brothers safe throughout the day, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for the the government. I pray for election time coming up. I pray that you guide that and you have your hand in it, Lord, and you put the right person in office, Lord, to to get us back on track, most of all, biblically. We need God in this world more than anything. We need you, Lord. I uh, I want to pray for these kids, all these babies in this church. When I got here in 2021, this this church was nowhere near as big as it is now, and I always said, I, I used to tell my wife, Candace, and just, I love a small church. I don't want it to grow. But uh, all the people that I've met, you know, I've been spiritually fed by so many God-fearing men in here. And it's been such a blessing, and it's growing. And now you've called me to uh, spiritually feed these men and young men. And I'm truly grateful, and I give you all the glory each and every day for that. And, uh, Lord, I just, like I said, I'm so thankful to be a part of this church. It's, uh, it's your will, Lord. I just, I want to be there, and I want to ask you to just uh, guide me through it each and every day, and I want to seek your word. I know I'll fall short each and every day, some way, shape, or form, but your grace and your love, I can turn to you every second of the day when I fail you, Lord, and you're there with open arms. And I'll be forever grateful for that in your love and grace and sending your only son down the cross for each of our sins each and every day. And uh, Lord, I just I just ask for the rest of this this week, you keep each and every one of us safe, the men and the women that are going to work each and every day. And I pray you just give them knowledge and wisdom to uh, be a light for you, for people in this world that don't know you, Lord. And I pray for them mamas at home that stay with their babies and raise them. And I pray that you give them guidance and uh, wisdom to uh, raise them babies and, and then in, in the name of the Lord. And um, Lord, I, I'm just going to go ahead and close on, uh, like I said, I fail you each and every day, but I strive to be a better man each and every day and seek your word. And I want to raise my family <clears throat> in church and I, I make a point for that each and I, I make church a priority and uh, I just I praise you each and every day and I just thank you for all that you provide for me and my family each and every day and uh, I love you Lord and it's in your son's holy name I pray amen Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you for this evening, Lord, and the opportunity to come in your house, Lord, and, and study a portion of your word tonight, Lord. And God, first I just want to lift up all these prayer requests, Lord. There was a lot mentioned today, and there's tonight, and there's a lot on the list, Lord. And and Lord, you know all of those needs far better than I do, Lord. And God, we know you're the great physician, Lord, and we trust in you and in your plan, Lord. Lord, I just I'm thankful, God, that uh that you're in the business of using imperfect people because uh, that's what I am. And I'm thankful, God, that uh, that you'll still use me. And I pray, God, that you would just help us to be to be open to your voice and respond, Lord, when you're telling us to do something. Lord, help us to be obedient, God. Lord, I just want to lift up our nation to you, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would send a, a great and strong revival, Lord, and that we would just turn back to you, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you help us to remember what the real reason for the season is, Lord, and help us to not to get so sucked up in the commercialism, Lord, and just help us to stay focused that, uh, that it's all about you, Lord. It's about your son and what and you sending him down here to earth for us, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, that, that you loved us enough to send your son to die for us, Lord. I pray, God, that you help us go out this week and help us to be a light for you, Lord. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this time tonight. And uh, 
Lord, as we're about to close and go to our homes, I want to pray, Father, that you guide us as we go, and I want to pray, Father, that you keep everyone safe. I, Lord, as we're praying tonight, I can't help but think about all those families just in the last two weeks that have that have lost loved ones, some today, and uh, Lord, this is just going to be a sad time of the year for them, and I just want to pray that you would just, Lord, just wrap your arms around them and love them uh, like only you can. And uh, Father, we just pray that, that through this season, those that have gotten their eyes off of you would get their eyes on to you, and those that are hurting would be comforted by you. And uh, Father, we want we just want to see you glorified through this wonderful Christmas season. And Lord, we just pray for all the sick, all the hurting. We pray, Father, that uh, you'd you'd reach down and touch those that are that are sick and just restore them back to health. Uh, but, Father, we pray your will be done with all of this. We lay this whole uh, prayer list at your feet to know that you know what's best for each and every one of them. And, Lord, we just want to tell you that we love you and we thank you for Jesus. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, one thing I wanted to share with you all, too, is uh, are you all excited to see that building going up? Praise the Lord. And hopefully it'll be, that's what I was going to just kind of give you an update Hopefully they'll be finished with it by that first week of January and John Cryer's lined up to come in and start the, the framing and um, we're getting everything lined up so hopefully it'll be rocking and rolling now uh, as we keep moving forward. It's look, it's exciting. So y'all keep praying for that. We fed the crew Monday, had a really good, and we were able to just love on them and uh, had a good time doing that. Dennis? Yeah. Yeah.